Why test with the DDSM-1? Why isn't the pinch method good enough? With the pinch method, you have an uncontrolled amount of draft. Uncontrolled because the inducer provides full draft from 0 to 2 inches of water column or even more draft within seconds. Your pinch is an uncontrolled restriction of this draft. The switch operates on this draft and the draft acts as vacuum. Vacuum is absolute. By pinching the tubing, you will still reach the maximum draft or vacuum. You are not controlling it. You are just slowing it down, similar to what an orifice does in the port of the switch. The DDSM-1 gives you a precise controlled amount of vacuum. Providing this consistent control amount of vacuum, the DDSM-1 allows you to properly test a pressure switch for a weak cake or cracked diaphragm or a diaphragm with holes in it, a weak micro switch, and a plugged or partially plugged bleed port. The pinch method can't prove that the pressure switch is starting to fail. It can only tell you that it has failed once it's so far out of calibration that it has failed completely. The only way to accurately do this in the field is with the DDSM-1 draft simulator from Philpiece Instruments. It is also the only tool available to accurately calibrate any adjustable pressure switch in the field. This allows you to not only always have the right pressure switch when you need it, but it also helps you to reduce the inventory of so many switches that you are already carrying. Be sure to watch our video on calibrating adjustable pressure switches with the DDSM-1 draft simulator. Please enjoy this video. Hi, my name is Rich McFarlane. I am the technical trainer with Philpiece Instruments and today I'm going to show you how to test a pressure switch using the DDSM-1 and we're going to use the SDMN5. Before you test the pressure switch, make sure there's no water in it. Take it out of the furnace and turn it over. Gently tap it. You can see there's no water in it. Look inside. You'll see that there's no water damage, uh, no water accumulation or anything like that. We can take a look at the bleed port and see that there's no water forming on it. You can't really see through it. But that's another test that we're going to perform as well. Go ahead at this time and inspect and see what this is. This is a 0.80 inches of water column pressure switch. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on and begin our test. Take the tubing that came with the DDSM-1 and attach it to the top ports. Make sure that the uh, pressure dial on the top is completely open by turning it counterclockwise until it stops. Don't over tighten that. Or over loosen it. Also, we're going to go ahead and connect the leads to the front of the DDSM1. Now we're going to take one of the leads and connect it to the common terminal on the pressure switch, and take the other lead and connect it to the normally open terminal on the pressure switch. Take one of the tubes and connect it to the pressure switch and connect it also to your manometer. Now it does not matter which tube connects to the manometer or the pressure switch, nor does it matter which one of the wires connect to the common or normally open. Important note. When connecting to a set of two or more pressure switches, test each one individually. Each pressure switch has its own bleed port and that will affect the test. So what we're going to go ahead and do is turn this on. You have a high speed and a low speed. Go ahead and turn on high for a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on low. Uh, for testing, anything over an inch and a half, you can keep it on high. Note. High speed is recommended for calibrating adjustable pressure switches from an inch and a half to 20 inches. However, high speed can be used to test most pressure switches from 0.40 to 20 inches if needed. Slowly close the valve and pay attention to the LED and also to the reading on the manometer. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it up so you can actually see the numbers on this thing while I perform this test. 
and pay attention to the red LED when it goes off. Now I'm making very fine adjustments to this to show you the precision of this tool. And we see the pressure switch did close at 0.86. I'm going to back her down. And we want to see when this pressure switch does open. And it opened at 0.80. So we know that this pressure switch is good. Symptoms of a pressure switch that is starting to fail. Weak micro switch. The LED flickers when closing and opening the switch using the DDSM1. Failing micro switch. When testing, you will hear the click of the switch well before the LED comes on. Plugs bleed port. When testing the bleed port, the pressure readings do not change. Partially plugged bleed port. When testing the bleed port, the pressure readings change very slowly. Weak or coated diaphragm. Pressure readings are off by more than 10%. Holes, cracks in the diaphragm. Pressure readings are off by more than 10%. Pressure readings vary with each test. More pressure is required to close the switch than normal. Pressure readings do not stabilize. Note. An inducer that pulls an inch and a half of water column or more can close a pressure switch rated between 0.10 and 1.30 inches of water column, even if the diaphragm is bad. This will cause erratic behavior and you may have a difficult time finding the problem, as it may seem to work perfectly fine while you are testing the furnace only to act up when you are gone. Because the inducer can produce so much draft, the pressure switch will appear to be working perfectly using the pinch method. The only way to find this condition in the pressure switch is to test it using the DDSM1 draft simulator from Field Piece Instruments.